all day. Been a road, been a road. Yeah. Oh, the heat was on. It's colder than my fucking coat. <laughs> yeah, man. The story went when I met Rayful Eppin, man. I got to go back when I was in high school. We was in high school, and some of the guys from around his way uh, got transferred to Spingarn. They came from Dunbar High School. Around his way is Orleans, the favorite, uh, the popular, famous strip, Orleans Street. So when they came up Spingarn, they came from up Spingarn from being put out of Dunbar. It was making a lot of noise up Dunbar, terrorizing. So they came to Spingarn. I already had Spingarn kind of like in a chokehold. So the words was coming around the school, man. Some dudes keep getting this shit. Dudes keep fighting and starting a few things, but we never crossed path. So one day I'm on the third floor in the hallway talking to a young lady that happened to go with the, one of the guys when they was in high school, junior high or another school or something. So he ended up calling her while I was talking to him and told her to come here. So I asked him, man, where you going at? She was just like, that's all, that's my old boyfriend. So when she went to him, she just had a little smirk on her face. At this time, I don't know, he had a little smirk on his face. At this time, I don't even know who he is. So this is probably like the sixth period. So the next period was the seventh period. The principal called me to the office because my name was ringing around the school for just doing a lot of silly stuff, just being a young boy. So the, the, the sister principal was telling me at the time, he said, man, look, you keep doing a lot of stuff in the school. Your name keep coming up. You hanging across the street in the pool room. Every time you come around, y'all 15, 20 deep doing stupid stuff. He say, man, next thing you do, you're getting put out of school. So where he was talking to me at, we was talking in front of the principal office. But where we were sitting there, I can look straight down the hallway into the auditorium in the, the vestibule when you go right out the door to go into the front of the school. So as he talking to me, I'm looking down there and I see the same dude I just seen upstairs. You know, I see my, one of my little homies that grew up with me in a dude's face. They close to close, like they down there kissing. So when I'm looking, so I took off and broke, ran down there. I run, ran away from the principal while he talking to me. So it ended up being one of my little homies run my way. And again, talking to the same dude I just seen last period with the girl. They in each other's face having words. So I immediately say, man, punish that nigga. Man, punish him. So he was like, oh, y'all trying to jump me? Y'all trying to jump me? And he just walked off and said, we see you at 3. I said, we see you at 3. So you know in school, man, when you talk about a 3 o'clock fight, shit spread like wildfire. So around 3 o'clock, we come outside. Everybody out there waiting. I get out there about 3.10 or something. Everybody out there waiting is deep out there. All my little homies, all his Orlean guys and Orlean mixed with some other guys, another neighborhood in between both of us called Trinity. They got together because they went to junior high together. So I had all my little Benny Roadside and some other guys that just, you know, that messing with me. So by the time I come out, they waiting. So they on one side, we on one side. So I see my little homie from around my way that was in each other's face. He had his hand wrapped up in the ace band. So he was just like, man, I messed my hand up on the basketball court playing basketball around our way, which is lights and turns. I said, no, nah, you're going to punish that nigga. You're going to punish him today. So I'm taking, his, I'm actually taking his hand wrap and unwrapping his unwrap as we, as I'm talking. As I'm unwrapping his wrap, it's a dude partial on the side of me, mugging me. I can feel him, but I couldn't see him. So I'm talking. So I turn around and look to the side. It's one of the ops, what they say, uh, you know, gritting on the side of me. So I just asked him, I said, nigga, I said, man, what, what, what the fuck you gritting on? What you, what, you, what you about to do? So he just kept on just squaring off for me. So I'm just really just talking to some hype, young dude. And I tell him, I said, man, you fake. What you going to steal me? Steal me. He stole me. He stole the shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? And it was crazy. And when he stole me, I didn't really believe he did. I could just hear the people in the crowd like, woo. And me didn't react to it stealing me. I'm just still talking to sites. I tell him, Nigga, steal me again. He stole me again in my eye. Notice saying some TV shit, but I'm young and wild. And when he hit me in my eye, I seen like two or three dudes in front of me, like blurry. Like it was one person, but he just, he just looked, he looked at blurry. So my stepfather that showed me a lot to work with my hands, you know, uh, used to live with me. He always told me, if you, get, you ever see a blurry, fight the man in the middle. So I grabbed him in the middle. I started working him, and that's how the whole fight break out. So it was a whole big school fight, like on some TV shit. Everybody, 20, 30 niggas fighting each other. So we end up getting the best of them. And what happened was when they went back to they ran their way and told Rafer the whole story, they made it like I was a big old 
giant or something, say, man, this nigga so sight, he let a nigga steal him two or three times. But for real, for real, I really was bluffing for real. I was just talking shit. I really wasn't expecting a nigga to hit me, but he really did, right? And so that was the a big uh, myth of the story that, man, that I'm letting dudes, I let a dude steal me before I actually punished him. But no, it didn't play out that way. He just happened to steal me. And I didn't think he was going to steal me, right? But so anyway, so Raven sent word that he wanted to meet me. But he said, come down Orleans. So a couple of my buddies from around my way, they was real excited because he had a big name. He was, you know, getting money at the time. He wasn't who he came to be, but he was still getting a whole lot of money. So I said, man, I'm not going around his way to meet him. You know what I'm saying? So I refused to go meet him. So about a week or so later, we see him in the Metro Club. He on one side. I'm on some side with a couple of my buddies. I see him talking, but I still don't work my way over there to him. He don't work as well as me. I guess ego involved, because I wasn't going to come over and submit, and he ain't coming and submit to me. So after the go-go, we used to go to a joint called the Bowling Alley out of Riverdale, Maryland. So you go there, that was like another go-go. The Bowling Alley so deep. Can't even walk around. They gambling in the hallway. All the girls from go-go coming in. So it was almost like an after, a after hour joint, but it was really a, a, a Bowling Alley. So me and three of my good men came down there. Actually, my little man had got in the school to, uh, to fight in school. And two of my other buddies, we going to, we going to the uh, bowling alley, and it's so crowded, so we coming down. Soon we get in a joint. Uh, a Merlin, a little PG, little Merlin crew that was real deep. Oh, they was jumping dudes and doing a lot of stuff right there in that little pool area. End up getting into it with us, bumping into us. So we end up getting a big fight with them and chase three or four of them outside of a side door. So we running through the pool, the bowling alley, and we run out of the side door. And they, all the time, we, we think we'll be chasing them out, but they running to get the rest of their men. So they run the side doors, about 15 or 20 of them out there. I guess they want some motherfucking break. They lay on the car, just chilling. So we said, oh, shit. So we turn around and start running back in. So when they chase us back in, it was a little cooking area where they sold hot food at. Rafe and all of them, his little crew was over there. I've got three dudes with me. They already in front of me. I'm the last one. So when we got inside the pool, the uh, bowl now, it was so crowded. I just took like five steps and blended in the crowd. And then as they started chasing my men through, I started fighting them from the back. And I heard Rafa tell his buddies, man, man, help them, help them out, man. Them homies, they from around Northeast. Help them out, help them out. So we got it. We ended up matching their numbers. Again, we ended up getting out on them. Big old broad police came, locked some people up. We ran, and it was a house of pancakes across the street where we used to go after we leave the, uh, the bowling alley. And I met Rafa over there, man. And we talked like from about, Three or four in the bar, about four or five in the morning, all the way to like ten in the next morning, and man, it's like we knew each other forever, and we talked about just a lot of different things. His his neighborhood, my neighborhood, and he's like, man, let's get together, man, come around my way, let's meet up, man, and, and let's do something, man. And, uh, we posted met later that day, but since I was out all day, all that night, I ended up oversleeping, and I ended up meeting the next day, went down uh, a little elementary school called Wilson, right around the corner from Orleans. I go into the uh, the gymnasium, I'll never forget it. You talking, man, I don't even know, this is probably 86 or something like that. And uh, they wasn't even wearing no Mitchell and Ness jerseys or nothing at the time. And we go in the gym, I go in the gym, and they playing regular pickup with all full-fledged NBA jerseys on the short hair and the jersey, whole sideline full of court orange juices, just for dudes that go on the side and drink. I said, I'm, a, I'm saying, I said, I'm, I'm a young nigga. I said, damn, they get money down here. And after that, man, they came over there, Gave me the dap, we kicked it, and the rest is history. We started off the run, and that's how I met Rafael.